Hello. Mm. So we we will discuss the least upper bound, greatest lower bound of a set, and compact sets today. So this requires the concept of ordered set. Ordered set first. Uh, we define like this. Let S be a set. S be a set an order on s an order on s is a relation is a relation denoted by sign this sign which we call later on we will say less than sign or a smaller sign uh, with the following with the following two properties. The first property is that if x is in s and y is in s, then one and only one, only one of the following statement of the statement of the statements that is x is less than y, x is equal to y and y is less than x is true is true and second one is say if x y z They are the elements of S, and if x is less than y and y is less than z, then then x must be less than z. So, if a set S together with this operation, which we call it it's together with this relation less than sign, satisfy these two property, then we say that this is an order on s this is an order on s this sign less than sign we normally say we say x related to the means x is smaller than y x is smaller than y and the negation of this the negation of this is x is greater than or equal to y. This is the negation part of it means x is greater than or equal to y the negation of this will be x is strictly less than y. So, that will be the sign for them. Now, obviously, when we uh, say the set of rational number or set of the real numbers then this order is defined one can identify two real number or two rational numbers one can say which one is low smaller than the other or whether they are equal or whether one is greater than the other like this then the set order set means a set an order set s order set is a set S is a set S in which an order is defined in which an order is defined. For example, set rational number set of all rational numbers is an ordered set is an ordered set because if we take r and s suppose these are two rational number and define the relation r is less than s means s minus r means s minus r is a positive rational is a positive rational number is a positive rational number then 
obviously, it will satisfy these two property which we have stated. So, set of ratio number is an ordered set, set of real number is an ordered set, set of real number is an ordered set, ordered set. However, set of complex number, set of complex number is not complex number is not an order set. We cannot introduce the order between the two elements of a C complex number set of all complex number, because for example, if suppose I take the complex number E and 1 okay, and when we say E is greater than 1, okay, E is the ident uh, element say a square root of minus 1 this is E or I, I will say I, if you uh, I, I, this is a complex number. So, I is greater than 1, it means it is positive we are assuming. So, I into I is, is still greater than 1 into 1, that is I square is minus 1 is greater than 1 which is a F short. It means our ordering which you have in, introduced is not correct. Similarly, when can show whether if i is less than 1, we can again lead a contradiction and like this. So, we are unable to introduce the order in the over the set of all complex number that is the set of a complex number is not an ordered field, field we will discuss in algebra or some. Okay. Then we are interested in particular in defining the least upper bound and the greatest lower bound. So, let us see first what is an upper bound and lower. Uh, suppose S is an ordered set, S is an ordered set and E is a non empty subset of S. Now, if there exists some beta, there exists a beta in S such that all the elements of E that is x belongs to E is less than or equal to beta and this is true for every x belongs to E. Then we say then we say E is then we say beta is a or E is bounded above E is bounded above bounded above okay and beta is an upper bound hole and beta is known as upper bound upper bound for e now obviously beta is an upper bound hole there are many infinitely many real numbers will be available which will be an upper bound for E. Any number which is greater than beta will act as an upper bound for E. Okay. So, we are interested in the get least upper bound for it. The same case happens if it is uh, lower bound, we define the lower bound in a similar way. Suppose S is an ordered, suppose S is an ordered set. order set and E is a subset of S, non empty subset of S. If there exist, if there exist a uh, number say gamma belongs to S such that gamma is less than equal to X for every X belongs to E. Then we say E is bounded below and gamma is the lower bound is a lower bound is a lower bound of E. 
So, there are again there will be many lower bound available as soon as you take any number less than gamma which will also behave as a lower bound. So, we will be interested in knowing what will be the greatest lower bound of the set E. So, we introduce the concept of the upper bound and lower bound as follow. Uh, this is the concept least upper bound. Suppose S is an ordered set, S is an ordered set and E <coughs> be a non empty subset of S and also assume E is bounded above, E is bounded above. Now, suppose there exist, suppose there exist an alpha belongs to S with the following property. Alpha is an upper bound, is an upper bound of E of E this is the first property and second one is if I take a number slightly lower than alpha then it should not behave as an upper bound and second is if gamma is any number less than alpha then gamma is not an upper bound is upper bound of E. Okay. So, E is a bounded above and alpha is a such a number which is an upper bound of this, but if we take a number slightly lower than alpha, uh, then that number will not behave in upper. It means alpha is the least upper bound for E. So, then alpha uh, is called, then alpha is called uh, the least upper bound upper bound of A and we denote this thing is and also or some we also say it is a supremum supremum of A of A and we write is we write that least upper bound of set E is alpha or it is the same as when we say supremum of E. The similar way we define the greatest lower bound. In a similar way we can introduce the concept of the greatest lower bound of E. So, what we assume is suppose S is an order set, S is an order set, E is a subset non empty subset of S and E is bounded below, bounded <coughs> below. Suppose there exist and say beta belongs to S, uh, a beta belongs to S with the following property, with the following properties. The first is beta is a lower bound, is a lower bound of E, is a lower bound of E. Second one is if a number if I choose, if a number say delta which is greater than beta, then delta 
is not an is not a lower bound of e is not a lower bound of e okay so if we take any number delta slightly higher than this it will not be lower bound then this beta then beta is known as is known as greatest lower bound of e or we can also say it is the infimum infimum of the set e and we denote this edge denote it as beta is the infimum of the set e or is the same as the greatest lower bound of e so this is the way uh, we define the greatest lower bound and upper uh, and the least upper bound greatest lower and least now let's take an example suppose i take the set a let a be the a be the set of all positive rational number p p is positive rational number so it is uh, positive rational numbers such that p square is less than 2 and let b is the set of all positive rational numbers such that p square is greater than 2 p square is greater than 2 now if we look that a and b a is the set of all positive rational number whose square is less than 2 and b is the set of all positive rational number whose square is greater than 2 obviously a is bounded above in fact all the elements of b will be the upper bound will be act, will act as an upper bound for a but a does not have the least upper bound because we can't get the rational number which is for which we can say is a really a number uh, which is a least upper bound for it similarly for the b if you look the all the elements of b satisfy this condition then it has a lower bound and all the elements of a behave as a lower bound of this plus all rational number which are negative or zero will behave as a uh, lower bound for this but neither a nor b has an upper bound and the greatest lower bound okay so this will show that uh, a contains no largest number and b is clearly a contains no largest number while the b and b contains no smallest number Okay. So, in this case the greatest lower bound uh, A has no greatest uh, B has no greatest lower bound and A has no largest number. So, this so therefore, we can say A has no least upper bound least upper bound while the B has no greatest lower bound that is obviously true. Okay. Let us take another example. Suppose I take the set of rational numbers, let E1 be the set of all rational number R belongs to Q such that R is strictly less than 0 and E2 be the set of all rational number Q rationals such that R is greater than or equal to 0. Okay? R is, uh, sorry less than or equal to 0 same such that r is less than or equal to 0 suppose i take this thing then the set of rational number which are less than 0 so obviously it has an upper bound 0 here also has upper bound 0 it means the supremum value of e so therefore supremum of e1 will be 0 supremum of e2 will also be 0 but you see the supremum value of E1 does not belongs to E1, while the supremum value of E2 belongs to S. 
So, it is not necessary when we say the least upper bound or greatest lower bound, then it is not required, it is not necessary that the that supremum value will be a point of set. It may or may not be the point of set that we have observed here. Okay. Similarly, but both are having the same. Okay. Similarly, now another interesting property which is uh, in connection with the order set is this is known as the least upper bound property. Least upper bound property. What is the least upper bound property? An ordered set, an ordered set S is set to is said to have is said to have the least upper bound least upper bound property if the following is true is true. Following is true. What is therefore if if E is a non-empty subset of S is not empty, is a non-empty subset of S and E is bounded above. Bounded above, then the supremum of E that is least upper bound of E will exist and exist in S, exist in S. So, this is the least upper bound property of a set. An order set S is said to have a least upper bound property if the following is true. That is, if we take any subset, non empty subset of A which is bounded above, then supremum E exist in S, then we say this set S is a, is a least upper bound property. If for any set this supremum does not exist, then the set will not have a least upper bound property. For example, set of rational numbers, set of rational numbers that is which is denoted by Q does not have does not have least upper bound property bound property and that we have seen already with this example because basically a and b these are the two subsets of the uh, rational numbers and neither the a nor b has an upper bound is it not neither a has, has does not have a upper bound b does not have the lower bound for it so basically the set of rational number you can say does not have a least upper bound property. Now, there is a relation between the greatest lower bound, least upper bound and the least upper bound property. In fact, it is shown that if the set is having the least upper bound property, then it must have a greatest lower bound property also and that can be judged in the next theorem. The relation between uh, the relation between the least upper bound, greatest lower bound and this. So, theorem says or you can before this you can write the remark, I would write the remark here is every order set, there is a relation between the greatest lower bound that every order set, order set with the least upper bound property upper bound properties with the least also has there is their remark is there is a close relation close relation between between greatest lower bound 
and the least upper bound and that and that uh, this that every order set with the least upper bound property also has the has the greatest lower bound property. This can be seen with the help of this result. The theorem says that if suppose suppose S is an order set order set with the least upper bound property with the least upper bound property. upper bound property and suppose B is a non empty subset of S, B is a non empty subset of S having and B is bounded below, bounded below. So, S is an ordered pro proper order set which has a least upper bound property and a set B has a uh, property which is bounded below. Now, this together will implies the least relation between the um, greatest lower bound property. Okay. So, what it says is if B is bounded below and let L be the set of all, all lower bounds of B, lower bounds of B then the supremum of B that is the least upper bound of B that is alpha will exist, exist in S and, and this alpha will be the infimum value of B that is it will be the greatest lower bound for B and in particular infimum of this V exist in S. Okay. Infimum there. Let us see the proof of this. What is given is S order set which has a upper bound property. <coughs> upper bound property means if B if any set is there which is a subset non empty subset of this and if it has an upper bound then the supremum of this will exist in this. Now, here we are assuming that S has the upper bound property and a non empty subset B is bounded below. Then because of this upper bound property and this condition, we will show that B will have the greatest lower bound and infimum of B will exist in S that is what it is. So, since B is given, B is bounded below, this is given. Okay. And what is about L? L is the set of all lower bound of B. B is bounded below, it is already given. It means there is a bound available. So, L is non empty. So, so this implies L is non empty. Okay. Now, L is the set of all lower bound of B. So, what is L? So, clearly, since L is the collection of L is the set of all lower bound bounds lower bounds of B. So, basically L consists of those by it means L is the set of those points in S by in S such that by is less than equal to x for every x belongs to B. <laughs> because L is the collection of a lower bound. So, the by is set is less than or equal to x then by will be the lower bound for B and all such by we satisfy this condition will come in the class L okay. and this will be a non empty set this one thing is clear. Now, every x. So, if we look the L, L is the collection of those point which are low less than or equal to x for every it means every point of B 
behaves as an upper bound for else. So, clearly, clearly every x in B is an upper bound is an upper bound of L. So, it means L is bounded above thus L is bounded above. bounded above. So, L is a non empty set which is bounded above it is a subset of S L is a subset of S. So, bounded above and is a subset of S is it not S in order. So, we can apply the property because S is an order set having the least uh, upper bound property. So, by the property since S has a uh, since S H uh, least upper bound property so so by this L, uh, L will have a supremum value so L H uh, supremum value supremum in S in S exists supreme value will exist and let it be let alpha is that supremum value of L is alpha suppose supremum value of this alpha is there. Okay. Now, if we choose gamma if gamma is any number less than alpha then gamma is not an upper bound of L. upper bound of L because alpha is the least upper bound. So, if we take any number lower than gamma lower than alpha then that cannot behave even a upper bound for it otherwise gamma will be the least upper bound. Okay. So, gamma if it is less than alpha it cannot be an upper bound A. Hence, what is our uh, B? B is the set of those points which are for uh, uh, such that every point of this is an upper bound for it and here gamma is not coming in as a upper bound for L. So, obviously, gamma cannot be a point in B because all the points of B must be an upper bound is an upper bound which we have shown, but gamma is not an upper bound of L therefore, gamma cannot be a point of B. Okay. So, what the, this follows it implies that uh, it implies that alpha is less than equal to A x alpha is less than for every x belongs to B because any number less than alpha cannot be a point in B. So, alpha will be the least number and then alpha will be less than equal to x. So, this shows that alpha belongs to L okay? that is what alpha belongs to L that is the supremum will exist and it is in L. Now, if alpha any number which is less than uh, alpha any number beta which is greater than alpha then beta cannot be in L because alpha is the least upper bound and all the beta is greater than. So, again it will not be in L. So, once it is not in L alpha uh, is uh, not in L uh, beta in L, then uh, what happened uh, that this beta which is greater than alpha uh, in other words that alpha will be the infimum value of B because then beta will be in uh, in which beta will be in B. So, it is a alpha beta. So, this shows alpha is a lower bound lower bound of B is a lower bound for B, but beta is not but beta is not edge if beta is greater than alpha it will not be lower bound for this okay because it is the least therefore alpha will be the infimum of b and that proves the results okay so that shows the result. now have, having proved this thing we will come back again to the sets we are we are discussing the open sets and closed sets etc we are the supremum value infimum value will be required. So, we need basically we wanted to show that 
result where the supremum concept and infimum concept is required. So, that is why all these things were taken. So, this result we wanted to show the result is let E be a non empty non empty set of real numbers non empty set of real number which is bounded above which is bounded above okay. and let by is the supremum value of E that is least upper bound for E. Then the result says that by will be a point of closure of E. Closure of E means set E together with this limit point is the closure set. Okay. Hence, by belongs to E if E is closed set. Okay. So, obviously, when E is closed set E ball is equal to E. So, this result second part follows immediately the nothing. The first part we wanted to show first. So, that E is a non empty set of the real number which is bounded above and supremum of E is B suppose Y then Y will be a point in E ball. Now, since E ball is a basically E ball is the union of E and E dash where E dash is the set of all limits point set of limits points of E collection of all the limits points of E denoted by E dash. Now, if by belongs to E, if by belongs to E, by belongs to E, then obviously by will be the element of E bar because it is a union of this and by bar. So nothing to prove. So let us suppose by is not in E, but by is a limit point of E. Assume uh, we will show then by is a limit point. So assume by is not in E, but we wanted to show y is in E closure. It means y must be a limit point of E. So, that we wanted to prove. So, let us seek for every h greater than 0, there exist there exist uh, there exist then a point there exist then a point say x belongs to E, there exists a point x belongs to E such that such that by minus h less than x less than y horse. Why? Here this is our set say by E, this is the set E, the point by is not in E it is outside of it. Then we can find for each h greater than 0, we can find at least some point which lies in the interval say this is by in between by minus h to by this point x will always be available. Otherwise, if it is not so, then by minus h will behave as a by minus h will behave as a upper bound for e if it is not so and this is true because otherwise y minus h will act as an upper bound least upper bound for e as a at least upper bound of e which is not true because y is giving to be the upper bound. So, as soon as you take a number slightly lower than this then this number must be Available. It means in between by minus n and by one can always get a at least one number of x e which is available. But what is the by minus y n? But this interval by by minus h is it not a real x lies? So is it not a neighborhood of by with radius say h? It is the left hand neighborhood left side left hand left side neighborhood of by in h. 
So, there exists a neighborhood of y which includes the point of x. It means every neighborhood of this y will include at least some point of uh, e. So, this shows that, but this is the neighborhood is a neighborhood of y with radius h in which the point x is in E, in which there exists a point x in E. So, this shows that y is the limit point of E, because the definition of the limit point of the set M is every neighborhood around the point y, every neighborhood to y, however small radius may be, must include the points of E. And this is true here, that if we take any neighborhood of y, at least one point x is available. Otherwise, if it is not available, then it will contradict to the fact that y is the supremum value of E. So, if it is a limit point, then y must be the point in the closure A dash. Hence, y is in closure of this set. <coughs> so, this proves the result. Okay. Now, remark we can see. Uh, we know if E is a subset of y is a subset of x. Suppose, we are x is a metric space. Then, we have seen that a set may be open in x, may be open in y and may not remain open in x this we have seen just like a open interval a b which we have seen it is open in r 1, but it is not open in r 2. So, in case of the open set or closed set the space which encloses the set is important where the set is E is open. So, that is why we can introduce the concept of an open set relative to the space relative to y or relative to x. So, we introduce here two definition that one is uh, a set E is open, a set E is open, E is open subset of x means, means to each P belongs to E belongs to E, there is associated associated a positive number a positive number R such that such that the condition such that the condition d of p q is less than r, where q belongs to x imply that implies that q is in E. Then we say E is open with respect to x, the open subset of x means then E is said to be open, open relative to x relative to x. Similarly, we can say uh, by since by is also a metric space under the same metric topology D. So, E may also be open with respect to y. Then we say define we define that uh, the set E is open the set E is open open relative to y relative to y by d by d or is a metric space by d if to each if to each here also x d we will write x d is a metric space okay relative to x by relative to y if to each p belongs to e there is 
there is if, if there is associated there is associated an r greater than 0 such that such that the condition condition d of p q is less than r q belongs to capital y imply that imply that q is in e then we say it is a, it means what suppose we have this set x d which is a metric space a set e this is a set e we say it is open in x means that if we take any point p in e then one can always find out a neighborhood around the point p or a ball centered at p with a suitable radius say r such that all the points inside this is a point of e is a point of e then we say that e is open in all the points q q which are of x all the point q which are in x if they are they are the point of e then we say it is a open e. it means that every point is an interior point with respect to x t but when you say say this is our by by is a subset of x so it is also a metric space with respect to d then we say that <coughs> e is open with respect to y now here when you draw the neighborhood around the p then the point q which you are choosing will must be a point of y okay because you are not getting the one of course the point of y is also the point of x but there may be some point which are in x but not in y so this relation when the distance of pq is less than r and q belongs to y implies if q is in e then we say e is open in y so as if there is no x only e is a subset of y and e will be the open set in y every point of p is an interior point with respect to y that's all then we say e is open relative to y similarly e is open now this has been shown that a set e may be open with respect to y subset may not be open with respect to the large set and that examples we have seen however in case of the compact set uh, we will see this result this restriction is not there so that is more uh, friendly than our open set or closed set so that's the one okay so we will see that uh, before going for the compact set definition we have one more results that result shows what will be the form of the open sets in the relative case suppose by is a non empty subset of x x d be a metric space where x d is a metric space let x d be a metric and y be a non empty subset of x a subset e of x a subset e of x d of x d is open a subset e of uh, x d uh, a subset e of y i am sorry so i will subset uh, e of y d by d let it be by d a subset e of by a subset e of by each open is open relative to y relative to y if and only if if and only if if and only if e can be expressed as or e can be written as by intersection g for some open subset g of x so what this result says is let x d be a metric space 
and by is a non empty subset of x. So, by under the same metric d will also be metric space and suppose e is a subset of by then we say a subset e of by will be open with respect to y or relative to y if e can be expressed into this form for some open set g of x if and only if that is if e is of this form then e will be a open set uh, subset of by and if e is open then it can be expressed into this form. So, vice versa let us see the proof of this. Okay. Suppose e is open related to by e is open relative to y by we wanted to show e will be of this one. So, by the definition of the relative to y means to each p belongs to e there is a there is a positive number positive number say our r p such that such that the condition condition d of p q less than r p where the q belongs to y implies implies that q will be in e. This is by definition when e is open relative to y. Okay? Now, let us consider b p as the collection of all such q belongs to x such that distance from p q is less than r, r p less than r p where q is in the elements of y. Let us q is in x q is in x. So, this is already there q is in x. Let us see. Now, obviously, this is a neighborhood. So, once in neighborhood it is an open set it is an open set and g if I take the union of all these b p where the p belongs to set E then this collection of the open set will also be obvious. So, it is an open set is an open subset of x clear nothing to now since p is in the neighborhood b p which centered p and radius say uh, r p p is in the for all p belongs to e this is uh, y construction we because p is the center of this neighborhood so it is clear that then it is clear that e will be contained in g which is con g intersection by g intersection by because this b p p is a set uh, in e and all the points in e belongs to b p and b g is the union of b p. So, e every point of e is in by as well as in g as well in g. So, it is intersection of this thing is obvious by our choice, but by our choice of b p we can say we can say we have that b p intersection by is a subset of e by our choice means because we have b p constructed like this way set of all the such that this is uh, uh, there is a positive such that this one is. So, when it restrict q to y then all these points basically they are the points common to e intersection with this and contained in e. So, by our choice because this will be the set to each p there is a project because e is open because e is an open set. So, this entire thing is available in e because e is giving to be an open set relative to this. So, this is by our choice therefore, for our for every p so that so the g intersection by take the union of this g intersection by is contained in e and hence e will be equal to g intersection by. So, one result is complete conversely just one more conversely if g is open g is open in x and e is of the form g intersection by 
then every p belongs to E, every p belongs to A has a neighborhood B p, which is totally contained in G, because G is open and E is of this form. So, E will also be uh, uh, for any p belongs to E means it will be in G and G is open. So, neighborhood must be available in G. Then the G B p intersection by neighborhood intersection by will be contained in E. Okay, B, because P is in there and G is this form, so intersection will be available in E, so that E is open, so that E is open relative to Y, by relative to Y, and that's proved the results. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks.